everyone. Today, I am gonna read Ruthie and the Not-So-Teeny-Tiny Lie. It's written by Laura Rankin. Ruthie loved tiny things. The tinier, the better. Her toys were the teeniest imaginable. She had dinky dinosaurs, itty bitty trains, ponies no bigger than your pinky, and teddy bears that were barely there. Ruthie loved finding tiny treasures too. At the beach, she searched for the smallest seashells. The flowers she picked were no bigger than fairies' wings. She even had an eggshell from a hummingbird. And wherever Ruthie went, she carried some teeny thing in her pocket. One day at school recess, after jumping rope and swings, Ruthie took a turn on the twirling bar. When she landed, she saw something in the grass. It was a little box with a teensy window and an even teenier button on top. She couldn't believe her luck. It was a teeny tiny camera. Ruthie looked through its little window. Then she pressed the button on the top to take a picture. Click, just like a real camera. This was absolutely the best thing Ruthie had ever found and it was hers. Click, click, she tried it out in every which way. Say cheese clouds, click. Say cheese little bug, click. Say cheese school, click. Say cheese Martin, click. But Martin didn't say cheese. Martin said, hey, that's my camera. Ruthie was startled. No, it's mine. Give it to me, said Martin. It's mine. It is not. It is too. It is not, shouted Ruthie, and she raced back to class. What's going on? asked Mrs. Olson. Ruthie's got my camera, cried Martin. I got it for my birthday and I dropped it on the playground. But Ruthie wanted that teeny tiny camera in the worst way. It's mine, she yelled. I got it for my birthday. Well, that wasn't true at all. Not one teeny tiny bit. Mrs. Olson looked at Martin. She looked at Ruthie. Goodness, this is a problem, she said. This camera can't belong to both of you. I'll keep it safe in my desk drawer for now. Let's talk about it again tomorrow. Ruthie's stomach flip-flopped all the rest of the day. She couldn't remember the answers to two plus two. And when Mrs. Olson read a story, every word flew straight out the window. The bus ride home took forever. Hi, Ruthie, said Mama. How was school? Okay, mumbled Ruthie. Dinner was macaroni and cheese, Ruthie's favorite, but she couldn't eat, not one little bite. Aren't you feeling well, asked Papa. I'm not hungry, said Ruthie. At bedtime, Ruthie was close to tears. What's the matter, asked Mama. So Ruthie told Mama and Papa the whole story. What do you think went wrong, asked Papa. I said it was my camera, cried Ruthie, but it's not. It's going to be okay, said Papa. You made a mistake and tomorrow, you can fix it. I think Mrs. Olson and Martin will understand. But the next morning, Ruthie could barely eat. Maybe Mrs. Olson wouldn't understand. Maybe Ruthie would have to sit in the timeout corner. Maybe Martin would never ever talk to her again. Maybe no one would ever talk to her again. Not one teeny weeny word. The school bell was about to ring. Ruthie took a deep breath and began the long walk to the front of the room. Mrs. Olson's desk seemed very far away. Good morning, Ruthie, said Miss Olson. I have something to tell you, said Ruthie in a very small voice. The camera isn't mine. I didn't get it for my birthday. I found it on the playground. Mrs. Olson didn't make her sit in the timeout corner she didn't even look bad. Instead, she gave Ruthie a hug and kissed the top of her head. 
Thank you for telling the truth, said Mrs. Olson. That took a lot of courage. I'm very sorry, Martin, said Ruthie. It's okay, said Martin. All at once, Ruthie's stomach stopped flip-flopping. She even skipped a little on the way back to her desk. She got the right answer for three plus seven in math. After lunch, Mrs. Olson read the funniest story Ruthie had ever heard. And on the short bus ride home, Ruthie realized she didn't miss the teeny tiny camera. Not one teeny tiny bit. Have a good night.